For almost six years, the viewers and supporters of Dub Broadcasting have partnered with Cornet Ministries to help bring the light of Jesus to impoverished communities in Bulgaria. Come with us now and let's see what God is doing. All year long, Cornet Ministries is visiting and ministering to people there in Northeast Bulgaria, taking food and supplies to these families, mostly in predominantly gypsy villages. And when the weather gets really bad there in Northeast Bulgaria, they go out and take whatever modes of transportation they can get. And horse and buggy, believe it or not, is still a viable source of transportation, especially in the snow. Here, food bags are delivered to families in a neighborhood called Balak. Many of these people live in shacks made from salvaged materials. The better homes are still heated with traditional wood-burning stoves, and oftentimes large families all sleep together in a single room for warmth. Like this woman, many people here make whatever living they can by digging through dumpsters or landfills for objects they can sell. Plastic bottles and scrap metal are among the items that are sought after. She is one recipient of food from Cornet Ministries. The people in Balik are very poor. Most of them don't have electricity and water in their house. Um, their house look like a shack. And sometimes nine, ten people live in one little room. It's a place ignored by government. The streets are all dirt and when it rains, it's all mud. In the winter time, you will see many children with no shoes and no warm clothes. It's interesting that they never get sick. God is watching over them. Subcho Kazakov and his wife Turi work with Hope Restored Bulgaria, an organization trying to reach and help people in the poorest neighborhoods around Dobrich, Bulgaria. Hope Restored Bulgaria was founded by Tina Cornette Lissy to help meet the needs of these children in these poverty-stricken areas. Uh, it's very difficult sometimes to me to even fathom the situations that these children are living in. But one thing about it is when they do see us, they see the love that we give them. And uh, it's, it's very important that we share God's love to these children because we may be the only ones that are giving them the love and the support that they need. One especially rewarding part of the job is during the Christmas season when mission teams distribute Christmas gift boxes and food to the families in this neighborhood. It is their favorite time of the year. All children are looking forward to eat. Some of the children don't get any other toys besides the toys in their Christmas boxes. The ministry works in Balak and other neighborhoods in and around Dobridge all year round. This also includes bringing in missionaries from America. So going to the Balak neighborhood was, it, it was very hard. 
Um, the first time we went, we went with Turi and they gathered all the, the children in the neighborhood and just to see some of them and just the poverty in that area and we went and brought them Turkish Bibles and food. Uh, you know, I, by the end of it I was in tears. I, I just couldn't, it was overwhelming for me, it was just overwhelming but I knew that God still loved these children even though their circumstances were, you know, really poor. It's just, you see, just sewage water kind of going through the streets. The streets are just rubble. Uh, the houses, I, I don't understand how they're still staying. It's a, it's a miracle that the roofs haven't fallen in. Hope Restored Bulgaria has built a special relationship with many families and children here, including some with special needs. We met this family about four years ago when we started working in that neighborhood. We found out about Bedrias family and we went to visit them. And then we found this special boy. He is a special need child. In the beginning, he was very afraid of us and he was crying, but now he knows us and he's always smiling when we come. And every time we have a chance, we go and visit him. He cannot come to church, to the services, but we visit him. We bring him presents, food, every time we can. He is 16 years old. Birhan is his name. As far as I know, all of these children live in one little room, very small room. Six children and two parents. Eight people live in that little room, very small. He doesn't take any government support because the family doesn't have address registration. Their house is illegal. It cannot be even called a house. It's more of a shack. So there is no child support. Both parents look for food in the dumpsters every day. They collect plastic bottles and they sell them. It's very difficult for them. I pray that the Lord will bless them. Parents have no education. I know that after the harvest is collected from the fields around Dobridge, the parents go there and try to find leftover potatoes or onions and this is how they provide their food. Turi and the rest of the HRBG team work to help feed this family, bringing bread and other supplies to help get through the harder times during the year. In addition to these ministries, Hope Restored Bulgaria also operates the Hope Center, where teachers work with children who often come from backgrounds of extreme poverty, sometimes from situations of abuse and neglect. We give them piano lessons, we give them the drum lessons, uh, we try to help them the speak and to write Bulgarian better. We teach them computer skills, we do crafts and draw together. We try to find the talents of each child and develop them. Hornet Ministries also supports a network of churches and villages in Northeast Bulgaria. Many of these villages are small and impoverished, like the village of Sarvids. Mira founded this church in her native village using the empty house of a relative to hold services. When we started the church in Sarvids, the children were so poor they would come 
and their shoes would be soaked wet, their hands were frozen, so I was trying to warm them up. I sometimes even took off my socks and gave them to the children. And when I show wafers or some chocolate candies, they would, their reaction would be of such excitement and the children eat everything. They're just hungry children. There would be no leftovers. And when I look at these children, how they eat everything and how they praise the Lord and how happy they are, I say, yes, Lord, it's all worth it. It's all worth it to do this for you. And when I see them singing and praying, how they worship the Lord, how they are thirsty and hungry for the Word, I'm full of the joy of the Lord. One of the most important parts of the ministry is to give out children's Bibles all throughout the year in both Bulgarian and in Turkish. Many of the children grow up in homes, but Turkish is the predominant language. When I give out Bibles and I work with children, it feels like I'm looking at them and I see myself, I see little Mira. And I say, Lord, you know how these children open their hearts to you and one day they will serve you like I serve you. I have grown up poor like these children, so I know how they feel. I used to be so happy about the a wafer, about the candy, about the pair of socks that these Christian people would bring to me. I say, Lord, you know which one of these children will one day serve you like I serve you. And I really can see myself in them. I see myself in these children. I pray for salvation in Sarevitz. I pray that the people will truly believe in Jesus, that He is God and He died for them. From this moment on, I want, I want them to believe in Jesus. I want to work for the Lord and I want to see people changing their lives. I want the people to believe that the Lord can deliver them and can heal them. I want to see change in the people's hearts and I believe this is going to happen. Thanks to volunteers and financial supporters, Cornet Ministries is able to help the children of Bulgaria year round. But here at Dub Broadcasting, we have taken a special interest to the summer camp. This will be our sixth year financially supporting Cornet Ministries with the summer camp there in Bulgaria. During the summer camp, these children come from all walks of life, both Turkish, Bulgarian, Gypsy, and come together and learn about Christ. They get to play games, they get to swim, it's an awesome time for these kids, and it's something that they wouldn't be able to experience any other time. Charter buses collect these children from their villages and bring them to camp every morning during the summer. Everything is provided free of charge, as their families would never be able to afford any experience like this. I wish that everyone could be like I am at the gate every morning as the children are coming in. Of course, all the staff is there at the gate, and we all hug and love on these children. And, and then we start out the day because those children have not eaten anything. And they go under the tent, and they eat their breakfast. After we have breakfast, then we go upstairs and we have the music, we have uh, the children read the Bible, they read Bible verses, sometimes they quote scripture, 
Uh, sometimes the uh, villages have a, a certain song they want to sing or a skit or, or, or whatever that they want to do. And so we have a lot of music because these children love to sing. Zaddy is one of the younger campers from the village of Inatimo. She has been coming to camp for several years now. In addition to children from villages all over Northeast Bulgaria, Cornet Ministry Summer Camps work with a special needs orphanage to allow a group of wonderful children to come every year. <laughs> it is always an awesome addition to the camp. These children love to sing and dance, and it is a huge blessing to all the workers to be able to work with them. The summer camp staff is a mixture of Bulgarian workers and volunteers. Zachary Scott is a volunteer, worship leader, and a teacher from America. Right now, um, I do worship sets weekly, and uh, it's a, been a blessing and an honor to get to do this here for the children. Uh, one of the songs that I wrote, we actually got to teach to the children, so it's pretty incredible. It's a humbling experience to have over 100 kids singing along to your song. We have the best keyboardist I've ever met in my life, Subcho, he's, he's something else, he is incredible. And then one of the uh, church members, Yvonne, he's here and he's a younger guy and he plays the Turkish drum and we just have a good time and we seem to be able to jam well together and I, I just really have enjoyed playing with them. By the uh, last day, they, they're all singing along with it and there's this really awesome energy in the room and I just feel the Lord's joy when they're singing that to him. The most important part of the day is in the morning, right after they've had music, it kind of brings them into worship, you know, and then they go to their, their classes. There's the first group, the second group, and the third group. And each one of these teachers are already prepared to bring a Bible lesson, you know, for the days uh, for that week. And they talk to the children and explain to them about what it means to be a Christian and um, whatever they are teaching about that week. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays, I um, am blessed with the opportunity to get to speak to the teenagers. Um, I'm with Vanya and she uh, does the translating for me, interpreting. And I, I start off on Tuesdays with telling them who they are in Christ and really teaching them about their identity in Christ. 
And then on Wednesdays, I share with them about the battle and the struggles that we face and just this war that we're called into that the Bible talks about. And I close on Thursday teaching them with the Holy Spirit and just the gift of God and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we have seen incredible breakthroughs. We Just kids in tears at the presence of God moving upon their life each day after we close in prayer. They're just really being impacted by God. I felt something inside of me stirring, making me come forward for a prayer. I just wanted to feel God's presence. And I really did feel it. I felt happy because I really knew that God loves me. I felt it. One important part of the ministry is the ability to minister to kids one-on-one -on -one and to pray with them one-on-one. -on -one. It's, it's really sad sometimes when a kid comes up to you and they ask to pray for your alcoholic father uh, that beats their mother. Um, just terrible situations like that. I see a lot of alcoholism, a lot of, um, a lot of abuse going on in the families. And so to be able to pray with them and just pray God's protection over them, it, it humbles my heart and, and it, you know, you can, you can get easily uh, broken down, but I know that the Lord is greater and that the Lord moves when we pray. And so I'm believing that God is just impacting their family lives um, and, and they want to see their family saved. And so we pray with them uh, to see their family all come to salvation. Mir's children from Sarvitz were able to come to the camp for the first time this year. For the first time, we had a group of children from Tsarovets at camp. The church is very young. It started a few months ago. But I started telling the children about camp, that they need to get ready for it. I was telling them that they need to, to learn songs, prayers, dances. And they started asking me about camp, and I explained to them about Miss Betty, that it's a really fun place for children, that they will be fed there, and they will learn about Christ there. So when their time came, they were so happy. They were so happy, and every day they would ask me, are we going back tomorrow to camp? They were so excited about the swimming pool. Some of them asked me, is that the sea? Because some of them have not seen a sea or a swimming pool ever. So for the first time in their life, they saw a swimming pool. I love about camp that all children there get the opportunity to hear about Jesus and accept Him in their hearts. I love this about camp. I know it's just once per year, but I believe that's the best thing that could happen to children that don't know Jesus. They can accept Him there. And then, from then on, the Lord has a plan how to work with these children. You know, every week we have an opportunity at the end, usually on Thursday, for the call of salvation, for those that have uh, been able to come every day and they've heard through the Bible study during the day and then they hear it in the music and then in the afternoon we have that call for salvation. And as they just begin to talk about it, usually a lot of times the children just begin to get up even before they get through giving the invitation and then they are ready to receive Jesus into their heart. What a joy that is for me. I mean, that is the greatest point of the whole week. And I always tell our workers to get around those uh, children and let's make a circle of prayer around them. And uh, as we begin to pray, some of these children, you know, begin to raise their hands. Some of them begin to cry because they maybe have not had a relationship or felt like that someone loved them in their own lives, you know, in their homes, maybe they don't feel loved. But when they come here, they feel loved, but it's not just like my love, they feel Jesus loves them. So just to know when I see them come forward and begin to pray and begin to believe and trust in God, I can't help but think about heaven. It's gonna be so, so sweet because I know that those children are ready to go and now I will meet them in heaven.
problems. Last year, while I was here at camp, the Lord started working with me seriously. Last year, I was here at camp for the first time. I could see everyone smiling and happy, showing the love of God. People were sharing their testimonies, how they started to believe in God and what the Lord did for them. I wanted to be happy like them. I wanted to have what they had. I wanted to be like Jesus. The Lord did that for me, and I want to thank Him for it. That's how I became serious about God. I'm very glad that at the age of 12, I realized that God has a plan for me. One of the most awesome things about summer camp is when the kids get saved. And a lot of these kids that are born again, they elect to go through with baptism. They all get baptized right there in the swimming pool. A couple of the teenagers in my group, they wanted to get water baptized, and that was my first time helping out. We got to baptize, water baptize them, and the day before, uh, Banya, I even, she interpreted for me and I even got to speak on water baptism, just how this is truly dying to yourself, that you're being baptized into Christ's death and just really, you know, being raised into a new life and talking about the new creation that God wants to birth in us. And, uh, you know, so the kids responded and it was just awesome to see the water baptisms. I've never been a part, been able, you know, to be a part of that before. So I, I've had a lot of firsts here in Bulgaria. kids go back and get on the bus and every one of them are wanting to hug or they want to give you a high five or are or, or wanting to try to speak English to you. They'll say goodbye and sometimes instead of saying goodbye they'll say hello and so they are just ecstatic with the day that they've had and they run and get up on the bus you know we stand out there until we can't wave anymore. We just wave as far as we can and in my mind I think there's one more day that we've planted the seed of Jesus Christ into their lives. When I have to say goodbye, it's, it's just really hard. And then when camp is over, the last week of camp is over, I just want to cry because I don't want the summer to end. I want it to keep going. And I just told someone today, I said, you know, this six and seven weeks in the summer are the fastest weeks that I live for the whole year. It really seems like that I'm here such a small amount of time. And uh, I love every minute of it. And I know that if we continue to uh, sow the seed and teach the children about God, that they will never forget it. Cornet Ministries and Hope Restored Bulgaria work daily to bring Jesus to these children and their families. And with your help, we can continue to support them year round. I want to thank everybody that has given in the past and that will continue to give to make this wonderful mission possible. Thank you and God bless.